this video, I will show you how to use the Seymour Touch Panel's PID faceplate from the library once we start a new project and have our tag names imported. Let's get started. One of the benefits in using the Seymour Touch Panel on our application is the built-in PID faceplate that can be used, which will save time. Start by opening the Seymour programming software and click on the Start a Project button. Once the Step 1 dialog box is open, select the top button labeled Make a New Project if it isn't already selected. Type in a new project name. In my case, I used P3K PID demo. The Seymour Touch Panel I am using for my application is a Seymour part number EA7-T6CL, the newer 6-inch color TFT touch panel with LED backlight and 64,000 colors. So under HMI type, I select EA7-T6C forward slash T6CL. Next, select the PLC protocol to be used. Since for my project, I am using the Productivity 3000 via an Ethernet connection, I choose the Automation Direct Productivity 3000 Ethernet for a P3-550 CPU protocol. I then click the OK button. I can now import my tag names from the CSV file that I exported earlier from the Productivity 3000 programming software. I click on Import under the File pull-down menu and slide my pointer to Tag Name Database. This will open the Import Tag Name Database from Excel CSV file dialog box. I click on the Browse icon to the right of the File Path drop-down box and select the CSV file that I exported earlier from the Productivity 3000 software. In my case, the file is named P3K PID demo 0817-2011-TEE.CSV. I next click the Open button. You will notice I have not checked Overwrite Existing Tags since this is the first time I am importing to my Seymour project, but I do have my File Contains a Header Role checked because the exported CSV file from the Productivity 3000 project does have header roles. For my needs, I have kept the defaults for the CSV forward slash XLS import option. I can now click the import button and we'll see a progress window showing that I am importing 232 tag names, which include all of the Productivity 3000 system tag names and all of those that I created while programming my ladder logic into the Productivity 3000. When the importing is complete, a message will pop up saying Import Completed. I click OK and I am now ready to add objects to my Seymour screens. I will now add the Seymour's PID faceplate object. As seen in the software, I locate the PID faceplate bar graph object from the meter graph category in the object list and drag and drop it on our first screen. The PID faceplate dialog window opens and I am ready to add my tag names and other parameters. I can name the PID faceplate but decide to leave it as PID face bar meter 1. I also have the ability to see the changes to the faceplate as I make them. I can have a frame displayed around the faceplate or not. I decide to use a frame so I leave the frame display checked. I can have different languages displayed if required. I can give the faceplate a description for future reference. I can bring up the tag name database if needed to add or make corrections to my tag names. I can give the faceplate a label. In our application, I chose to show PID hyphen volume in gallons with an output shown as gallons per minute. We position the label at the top. I'll use the default text color of black, but use a background color that is a little more vivid. I decide to keep the defaults for the text size, alignment, and font style. I also will use the defaults for the legends that include auto, manual, alarm, and output. For a process variable, I type in T, which brings up tank volume, 
And at this point, I can either accept this or use the pull down to see a list of the imported tag names. The same goes for my set point, which is tank volume set point. I'll use the defaults for the fill and background colors. I know my tank volume and tank volume set point tag names are data type 32 bit floating point, so I need to determine how many digits and fractions I want displayed on the Seymour as numeric values. I choose a total of three digits, a fractional decimal placement of two, a range of one to seven gallons, and use a total of six divisions on the process variable and set point bar graphs. I use the calculated Seymour PID output tag name for my displayed output, except the foreground and background colors, use a total of four digits with three fractional places and a range of zero to 1,000. This goes back to the scaling instruction we did earlier in the Productivity 3000 that produced a diaphragm pump rate of 0 to 1.000 gallons per minute. Maybe a little more decimal places than we really need, but it does show how we can use both the capabilities of the Productivity 3000 and Seymour to manage how our data is used and displayed. Finally, I typed in the mode bit and alarm bit tag names that we control in our ladder logic to show if the PID loop is either in auto or manual mode and if there is an alarm condition such as overflow. Next, I press the OK button and position the PID faceplate to the right hand side of the screen grid. As seen here, I added additional push buttons to enable the PID loop control and the ability to select auto or manual operation. I also created a numeric entry to allow the operator to enter the set point value and a screen change button to allow access to our PID parameter screen. I'll explain more on this in a second. In summary, using the faceplate makes our PID loop setup, control, monitoring, and tuning easier to accomplish. And the PID faceplate uses bar graphs for the set point process variable and process output that allows us to see at a glance the status of our process. It also displays our operation mode as either an auto or manual and can alert us to alarm conditions. I've added a second Seymour screen to allow manually adjusting the proportional, integral, and derivative term values as required. The screen also includes status indicators for the main control power, overflow float switch condition, and the health of the Productivity 3000 optional battery used to retain time and date and retentative tag name values. The stack light tower indicators that show the process tank's volume condition are also on this screen. The use of the second screen and the first screen is ideal for remote access to the Seymour over the internet. Finally, a screen change push button is available on this screen to get us back to the main PID loop monitoring screen. In part 10 of this video series, I discuss tuning our PID loop and also cover the importance of safety during operation and tuning of any PID process loop.